Rev up your engine! Now here's something that you might not think was going to affect you, but it easily could. The Chinese company Geely, the first to have profits dropped 43% this year of virus stuff. And you might think, okay, how does that affect me? Well, this is their sales in China, dropped 43% now mark my words these guys are just as capitalist as everyone I don't know why they call them communists makes no sense at all they're selling cars to people that's capitalism they're gonna come in the United States I can just about guarantee you because we're a big market their market in China is dropping they're gonna want to sell them in the United States too I'm already seeing a few of them start to trickle in and I'm sure Geely's gonna join in the crowd and start selling them in the United States realize that Geely is invested in Volvo they're also invested in Daimler or AG the Mercedes company they're a large corporation and their sales are down in China they're gonna try to make them come up somewhere else just like ages ago when in the United States the government went after the tobacco companies for cancer the tobacco companies they started pushing it like mad in Asia now there's all these Asians smoking American cigarettes like crazy because <laughs> they pushed it out there don't think the Chinese aren't gonna try to sell their cars in the United States if sales in China are down and even if you've never heard of Geely they're bigger than Fiat Chrysler they're bigger than Nissan it's a big company they own Volvo they're using Volvo for hybrid and electric cars they're taking that technology so it may not seem like much that their sales are down in China but hold your horses that may be just the beginning of them starting to move outside of China start selling them in the United States could easily affect you it's an integrated world these days and if they don't make money someplace they're gonna try it somewhere else well here's the rumor Ben I hope the rumors true people are thinking that the Ford Raptor is gonna return to a V8 engine they took away the V8s and they're putting on the V6s now the V6s put out plenty of horsepower there's no arguing that they have 450 horsepower 510 pound feet of torque but GDI fuel injection they're not gonna last as long they're gonna wear out faster me I like V8s in a pickup truck you got nice reliable power you're not using tricks to get that power you can get a lot of power out of a four-cylinder engine too guess what they don't last as long I got customers that have explorers four-cylinder turbocharged eco boost engines and guess what before they get a hundred thousand miles many of them the engines start having wear problems just the other day I talked to a policeman friend of mine and they've got those pursuit vehicles and they've got the four-cylinder turbo engines in them and they tell me that oh Scotty those things are in the shop all the time he said I'd rather have our old Crown Vic once our old police cruisers because you see we still got a few left and they just keep running but these new ones with the turbo eco boost he said they're always breaking down and this is a policeman he's got no vested interest he tells me the truth about vehicles I tell him about his vehicle and I ask him hey what about your police vehicles and he admits he says the new ones they're in the shop all the time and the old Crown Vics that are really old now they aren't so it says something you're better off with a V8 the police press their vehicles right you buy a Ford Raptor what do you want you want something you can press a fancy off-road F-150 Ford Raptor please bring back the V8 for it that's what people really want not what your CEO when you're getting rid of your CEO anyways because he didn't know what the heck he was doing the guy was a furniture store man <laughs> that's what he started out as maybe you should go back to selling furniture and not trucks they made some bad decisions it would be a good decision to bring the v8 back for the raptors not just for the sound for the performance and for the long life grizzly goat says scotty i'm looking at a 98 cl 600 mercedes and i'm curious what the main issues are with those cars i heard they're reliable and has a bulletproof five-speed transmission anything i should be worried about cars 137,000 miles yeah worry about your sanity <laughs> <laughs> those things are endless money pits as they age especially with 137,000 miles now let's say you're looking for a toy it could be an okay toy if you get it for practically nothing I had a customer had one paid a ton of money for it less than that I mean you're talking about what a 23 year old Mercedes theirs was 13 when I sold it and they only got three grand for it so if you can pick it up for nothing and it runs okay 
<clears throat> Pay a mechanic, check it out first. He might say, hey, it's a pile of junk, don't buy it. But if he says it's reliable and you can get it for nothing and you want a fun toy, nice looking car, go right ahead. But don't, under any consideration, think you can buy that thing and use it as an everyday driver. It's a 1998 Mercedes and especially the 600s, they're endless money pits. But I've got customers, they have them as toys. They use them on Saturdays or Sunday when they go out. Fine, nothing wrong with that if it's an okay shape now. But pay hardly anything for it because they are worth absolutely nothing in the United States. They're too expensive to repair. They're just endless money pits with their complexity, even though it's a 98, it's still a very complex car inside. It's got all that crazy German technology. Heck, the Germans are putting crazy technology in their tanks in World War II. That was a long time ago. Their cars now, they're loaded with technology. And when it breaks, who? Start shelling out your wallet, empty it out a few times if you want to fix them. So unless you want a toy and it's really cheap, I kind of stay away from that. XL200 said, I saw a 2003 Chevy Venture for sale on Craigslist for three grand. Is it a good buy? How good are those vans? Okay, back in 03, Chevy was making better vehicles. There's no arguing that. You did not say the mileage, which is what gives you what the price is worth. It's an 18-year-old van. Basically, it's only worth whatever anybody will pay for it. If it's got, say, only 100,000 miles on it and the mechanic says it's in good shape, eh, maybe 2,500 bucks or so for it would be what it's worth. But I mean, it's got two, 300,000 miles on it. It's worth nothing. I give 500 bucks or something for it because it'll be relatively worn out by then. And those vans are stinkers to work on. They're very expensive to work on. It's the age, so don't overpay it. And my advice is if it's got 180, 200,000, I wouldn't even think about buying it. Up in a tree, yeah, Scotty, I was going to buy a 2005 Nissan Frontier 4x4 V6 with 84,000 miles. But the clutch is shot and they're expensive. Why is it between two to three grand? This is the reason I tell people, do not buy all-wheel drive vehicles unless you absolutely positively need it. Because working on them costs a fortune. Decades ago, I put a clutch on one of those four-wheel drive Nissans. I told the owner, I'll never do this again because I work by myself. I don't have a lift. I almost killed myself taking it off. Everything was so heavy and wiggling it back and forth. I almost broke my hand when I was moving the transmission around. It is a gigantic pain in the And that's what it costs to put clutches in those things. Try it yourself. <laughs> that's why I say, hey, if you don't need four-wheel drive, don't buy four-wheel drive. That's an 05, 16 years old, 84,000 miles, needs a clutch, gonna cost you that kind of money? <clears throat> I wouldn't give more than 1,500 bucks for that vehicle. He's not gonna be able to sell it if the clutch is worn out. Nobody wants it. Everybody knows it costs a lot of money to fix those things. He's gonna find he's gonna get a lot less money. He'd probably be better off finding maybe some shade tree mechanic that'd be willing to put a clutch in cheaper and then selling it that way. It'd be better off than selling it the way it is now because nobody wants to buy it when they find out how much it costs to put a clutch in. And sometimes guys screw up the job too, so <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even touch that thing. Billy Bob 19 says, got an 08 Ford Fusion. The brakes grind and the pedal sinks to the floor. I had a mechanic work on it. He thought it was the booster. He put a booster and a master cylinder on when it started to sink to the floor. It used to grind before. It doesn't grind anymore, but the pedal sinks to the floor. Hell, the grindy party fixed. That's easy stuff. Pads are probably worn out, right? Change the booster and the master cylinder and sinks to the floor. You messed something up. Now, I have seen this happen many times. The brake booster bolts onto the master cylinder. There's a rod inside there that adjusts how far you're pushing down the master cylinder. On the rebuilds, a lot of times that rod is not set correctly. It's an adjustable rod. There's two bolts, you loosen them and you can make the rod shorter or longer. And from my experience, a lot of times, the guys don't have that stupid rod adjusted right. Could be just as simple as adjusting that rod to make it longer. You go under your dash, you'll see where it pushes in. There's two bolts, you can loosen the bolts, you can unscrew the rod to make it push out longer and then tighten the bolts so it locks it in place. Try that, because I've seen that happen a lot of times. When you buy remanufactured brake boosters, I mean, who knows what they do in the factory? And they don't really test anything. They just take it apart, put a new diaphragm, and put it back together most of the time. So check the adjustment on that rod. Since it's sinking to the floor, odds are it's too short and it needs to be made longer. Easy fix if that's it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.